As the speed of the interconnected economy increases and relaxation time is at a premium, how do you guarantee that your vacation really does get you away from it all? Or at least gives you the peace and tranquility you desire, even though you may only be two minutes from London's West End, as we are right now. In other words, how do you get to go to those places known only to the privileged few? What you need are a few tricks of the travel trade. And this Golden Boss directory is exactly one of those. No matter what your status in life, a little luxury goes an awfully long way. A little pampering is not to be missed, and a little guide is worth its weight in gold. Though, um, don't go telling everyone. Otherwise, they'll all want one. Hello, and welcome to the programme that we're calling Visible Results. The visible results that businesses can achieve with new technology. We want to show you just how easy it is for any business, however large or small, to seize the opportunities offered by the new developments in information and communication, an aim that's shared by the government's own Information Society Initiative. The technological revolution is all around us, and in this programme we'll be using some of those new and nearly new methods of communication that businesses themselves could soon be embracing. Besides our guests here in the studio at the University of Plymouth, all three of whom we'll be talking to in a moment, we're joined by four sites in Cardiff, Birmingham, Pendle in Lancashire, and also in London in Docklands. They're linked to us using video conferencing technology. And later on in the programme, you can also join us if there are any issues that you wish to raise with our panellists. Welcome to the westernmost country in Europe, just south of the Arctic Circle, to a country that's home to some 200 volcanoes and twice as many sheep as people. You won't find any canals, motorways or railways here, but you are likely to live longer here than anywhere else in the world. Welcome to Iceland. Iceland's also one of the cleanest places in the world, and they don't have any heavy industry here. Do you know, it's so good, you'd have thought they'd be bottling it. Well, of course they are, and they've called it Iceland Spring. So, Thoria, what's so special about Iceland Spring? As you might have gathered, you're never far away from water on this island, and with the geothermal activity here in Iceland, the locals can use it to do all sorts of things, from generating electricity with a steam-driven power station, to heating their houses with it, bathing in it, and curing their ills. It's no wonder, then, that they save the best stuff to drink. Ladies and gentlemen, very good evening to you. Uh, it's been a delightful evening so far, and uh, we'll make it even more interesting and fascinating for you. My name is John Briggs. I'm the moderator. My sole purpose here is to make sure that everyone gets a chance to ask their question uh, and perhaps do a sheepdog act. In other words, round people up and to point them in the right direction. Uh, I'm, I'm not a part of the bank. I'm not a part of uh, Jack's entourage either. In fact, uh, we only met about 24 hours ago. Uh, and in that time, I've learned a number of things. I've learnt uh, that Jack is a very straight talker, and I'm not. That first meeting that you had, when you faced all those people who were already there, all the incumbents, you were facing a pretty stern audience, weren't you? At that stage, when you first looked at the job ahead of you, did you have much idea about how much change you needed to make to actually pursue where you thought GE should go? I was very lucky. I mean, I worked in the company I joined the company at uh, 24. Your autobiography is called Straight from the Gut. Straight talking is, is something that is very closely associated with you. Candor is something that you refer to a lot in the books as well. Honesty and truth and openness. And it's not something you find an awful lot in business. How do you create an honest, an open, a candid business? Well, you're never perfect at it, but you reward it. How do you make people live the values though because you know as well as i do if you go into a room with a variety of people uh, with a huge variance maybe in hierarchy from shop floor right the way through to senior management the values that you propose is you stand there and you give your presentation and you'll motivate people there's a significant proportion of those sitting there saying yeah it sounds great lovely i'll just carry on doing what i'm doing i i can repeat the slogans i can write down what i think the company stands for but i don't live those values <laughs> If you don't have an appraisal system, and you don't have an evaluation system. But Jack, aren't there other things actually preventing people from being honest? One of which is, is, is living in this very PC society in which we inhabit. Your grading <coughs> systems, your grading performance is well known. You differentiated uh, the 70% in the middle 
from the 20% at the top and the 10% at the bottom. 